Okay, so um, thank you for coming um, to this talk where I will talk about histogram support in the upcoming MySQL 8.0. Uh, my name is Eistan Gravelin. Uh, I work for the optimizer team at Oracle, the MySQL optimizer team. Uh, so um, the agenda for my talk is that I will start with a motivating example about why you want to care about histograms. Uh, so quick start guide on uh, how to use it, how are it used internally in MySQL, some example of how you can get better query plans by using histograms, and f end up with some, conclude with some advice. So for the a motivated ex example on the need for histograms, I have this simple join query here. I'm joining two tables, the orders and the customer tables. And I have some where conditions on the date and the account balance of the customer. And if I run explain on this query, you will get a query plan, uh, uh, the, the plan that the optimizer has chosen in order to execute this query. And what you can see from the output here is that it will start with the orders tables, and then for each row of the orders tables, it will do lookups into the customer table to find the matching row. And you can see which index is used. This one is, will be using a table scan. And that is because when you are looking for th more than 30% of the rows, using an index is not uh, optimal anymore. Because you will access so many rows that it's more efficient to just scan through the entire table. We have an index, an order date, as we can see here, but we are choosing not to use it. Uh, this estimate you have here on filtering is pretty accurate, because when you have an index, what the optimizer does is ask the storage engine, in this case InnoDB, how many rows are in this range. And what the storage engine does, or InnoDB does in that case, is it starts takes the start of the range and the end of the range and navigates through the B tree and it, then it estimates the distance between the two pages that it finds the start and end row in. And that way it has a pretty good estimate on the size of the range. However, for the other table, the uh, customer table, we don't have an index on this account balance column. So the optimizer does not have any information about the uh, selectivity of this condition. But what it does uh, in MySQL 5.7, it, it makes a guess. And since this is a range, it guesses that probably one third could be in this guess. It's could, and, but this is just a guess, not something it has any, any basis for except the type of expression here. So you might wonder, is this really the best join order? So one way to try the difference is to use a hint. And if this was 8.0, I can actually force the join order with this hint. I say, customer should be before orders. In earlier versions, you have straight join that can do the same. But then I would have to switch the order here, because then customer actually has to come before the orders in the in, in the join query. So th this new hints has the advantage that you don't have to edit your query in order to specify the join order. And what I see when I execute these queries is that if I switch the join order, it's much faster. It goes from 15 seconds to one second. And the reason for that is that there is no customer that has a, a account balance of less than one, minus 1,000. So actually, if you do this order, you will scan through the entire customer table, you will find nothing, and there will be no lookups look into the orders table. But this, the optimizer is not able to, do that, to know that because it does not have any information about the selectivity of this condition. And that is where histograms come in. So what I can do, I can say, create that histogram using this syntax, coming back to 
more on that, on this column. And after that, you see that now it will pick this join order. There's no join hint that forcing this join order. It picks it by uh, itself because now it knows that the filtering here is 0%. So now you see why the histogram is a useful addition when you don't have any other in statistics on your columns. So a quick start guide on histograms, or I could also call it all you need to know about histograms probably. It's not that much. Uh, so histograms as is statistics on columns, the distributions of the values you have for your columns. You've grouped the data values into buckets. I will get back to what that means. And for each bucket, you calculate the frequency of values in that bucket. For the histograms, you can have, they have maximum of 1,024 buckets. And then you build, a, MySQL builds a histogram. It could either base it on all the rows of the table or on a sample of the rows of the table. It depends basically on the available amount of memory use you reserve for creating the histogram. And there are two histogram types which are automatically chosen by the my, MySQL. It could either be a single tool, which has one value per bucket, or an equi-height, which can have multiple values by bucket. I will show you now what that means. If you have a single turn histogram, you have one value per bucket, and for each bucket you store the value and the cumulative frequency for that bucket. Um, Here's an example. You have a set of values between, uh, a column has a set of values, uh, a domain between 0 and 10, and you have like 14% zeros, you have 22% ones, and so on. And this is very useful because you have, since you have one bucket for each value, you, it's, you can both estimate easily the equality uh, frequency or the range frequencies because the equality will be, uh, as, as I said, if you have the column equal zero, it, you know it's 14 percent in that uh, uh, that uh, is the selectivity. And if it's like less than five, you know that is the sum of these four buckets gives you the se selectivity. And you see. If there's no value, like for four, there's no value. So there's no bucket for four here. So you can also determine or for lo values larger than 10. So you can easily determine if, there's, if a certain value is not in your database. But often you have columns that can take very many values. And then you can't have one bucket for each value. So then we have something called equi-height uh, histograms which can have multiple values per bucket. And the, the ones we have implemented, it's not true equi-height. Because unlike the uh, basic equi-height uh, histograms, we do not split values across buckets. So because in this case, this is the same values as we had on the previous slides, but now we have only five buckets. So we get more than one in each, uh, potentially more than one value per bucket. And you see that uh, a nice f feature with the not the quite equi height uh, approach is that for high frequency value, you get a separate bucket. So for the most, most, the most frequent value here is one. And, and in this case, you actually get uh, a separate bucket for one. So if you have something like equals one or not equals one, you get a pretty good estimates. But in other cases, uh, this is, equi height is best for range and not always that good for equality. You take the example of if you have something equal six. You have this bucket with five and six, and you see that the uh, frequency of, for this bucket is 13%, so you estimate there's six and a half percent of each. But in this case, there was actually 12% with five and 1% with six. So you see that equi-height histograms, when you do ranges, is not that 
uh, accurate as a singleton histogram. So for these uh, equi-height restaurant, we need to st store, the, we store the minimum value, the maximum value, the frequency, cumulative frequency, and the number of distinct values. Um, so how to create or refresh a histogram for a column? You do an analyze table command, but it's a special variant where you say update histogram on col a set of columns with a set of buckets. Um, note that this analyze table command, it will just do the histogram. When you say update histogram, it will just do that. It will not do the other analyze, the, the normal thing you do with analyze table. And you can drop uh, histograms on columns too. Um, as I said earlier, whether to do sampling or use the entire table is based on available memory, which you can um, set with this uh, variable. And the default is to use 20 megabyte while creating the histogram. This is about the amount of memory when creating the histogram, not the final storage of the histogram. Uh, we have implemented a new storage engine API for the sampling part, which, uh, but the default implementation will, will, even in the sampling case, it will do a full table scan. So if it has only enough memory to, for 20% of the value. It will re read the entire table, but just pick every fifth row. But it's possible for a storage engine to implement a more efficient sampling. So in, for the case, we want InnoDB to implement this in a way that it, instead of reading every fifth row, it reads every fifth page, because that would be much more efficient. Uh, the JSON histo the histogram is stored in a JSON column in data dictionary. And you can use an information schema table or view to inspect the histogram. So I just specify, I select from the column statistics uh, view of the information schema, and then I specify the schema name, table name, and column name to get the histogram for a specific column. And then you will see something like this. You will see the buckets. In this case, the histogram type is a singleton. So there will be two values, the value of, uh, for the bucket and the cumulative frequency for this bucket. You see they are increasing all the way to, the, to one since it's a cumulative value. Um, you see the data type, how many null values there are for this column. The collation ID it does not matter when it's integer, but if it's string, it tells you how it compares values. Uh, when it you last updated the histogram, so there's no automatic update. So you need, if you want to refresh because your values have changed or something, you need to do another analyze table uh, command. Here you can see the sampling rate. So what you could do if you want to have a full uh, table uh, sample, uh, uh, full histogram over the whole table, you can say, oh, it used only 20%. Let's uh, increase my memory usage to, go to 100 megabyte, and you can sample the entire, or you can base it on the entire uh, thing. And the number of records specified, uh, I didn't, oh, I forgot to mention that on the uh, syntax. You have this with and buckets, where you can specify how many buckets used. And this part is added because when you do a MySQL pump or dump, it will actually put the analyze table commands into the dump file so that when you run it, uh, load it again, you will actually get recreated the histograms. So that's why it stores the, uh, the original specification. Because if this is a singleton, it's, like here, it's only have seven buckets. But you, if you specified it with 1024 and you, the data has later changed, you wanted to have it to, it to still be a singleton, for example. And we can use this information schema. Oh, now, first for strings, uh, you consider maximum 42 characters. So if you have very long strings, and they all have the first 42 characters are the same, then this is kind of not the best. Uh, but. Um, and they are base64 encoded. Uh, this is because 
uh, what is stored in data dictionary or in JSON in general is UTF-8. But you can, in, in, in theory, have any character set here. So it's not necessarily valid JSON, uh, valid UTF-8 character uh, strings that you are storing. So you have to decode them in order to see strings. Uh, and there's a, what I would think is a bug, I think we uh, will fix before GAs. There's some prefix here that should probably be hidden from you. So, but the basic thing here is that I use the JSON table uh, function in 8.0 to convert these histograms, or the buckets array, into a relational table. So this way you can, uh, you can get the table over the values and you can see here the cumulative frequency. But if you want to see the actual frequency of each bucket, you can use a window function, as uh, Sergey talked about earlier. You take the value of this bucket and then you subtract the values of the previous bucket. That was the lag function. It refers to the first previous in this case. And since I know this uh, uh, array is already sorted, I don't need something in the over clause here. And that way you can actually see that we have, for this order status column, we have 48.6% Fs and 48.8% Os and just 2.6% Ps, for example. And that's a typical column where you want uh, a singleton histogram because uh, whether uh, if they have uh, uh, something equals f here and you optimize that without a histogram, I think this is really selective. It's, uh, it's not because it's like 50% uh, of the rows have this value. So how are histograms used? Um, the mo most important uh, um, use case is for when the optimizer wants to uh, uh, optimize join queries. Because I see we do something on the first table, and then there's some filtering here, and what's left goes into lookups into the next table. And it's this filtering here that's important to know, because then you will know how costly is this next step. So if this, this probably one of the major um, issues with many query plans is that the optimizer does not get the cardinality right here. It does not estimate the effects of the intermediate steps of a join. And there are, as I've already touched upon, several ways the optimizer gets these uh, estimates. In MySQL 5.7, it could base it on the range estimates that I talked about early, uh, earlier the way you do deep di or dives into the index and then you compute the distance. There's also index statistics, what you get with the normal analyze command, table command. And we added in 5.7 five, some, five, some guesstimates here that said that if it's equality, it's 10%. If it's uh, some uh, less than, uh, and so it's one third and so on. Just to have some estimates here because some filtering is better than no filtering often. Uh, if you have one table with some filtering and one table without any, you would prefer to start with the one with some filtering. Uh, what's different now is that you have histograms here. Still, the range estimates are the most accurate, but histograms is much better than guesstimates. And this is why histogram is not that important in MySQL as in many other databases, but because my, most databases does not do this uh, range estimate using an index. So, so, so the use of histograms is mostly, in my scale, for columns where you, or is for columns where, where you don't have an index. Um, so you can then have different ways of getting estimates here. You have the range estimate for this uh, 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 column here if you have an index. And in this equality, you can use another kind of statistics. And then you have these guesstimates if you don't have histograms. And then you compute the, the total here is, if we assume that they are not correlated, this uh, coalition, so you compute the selectivity by multiplying the different here. And then you, if you add histograms here, you see that H, if you look at this, 
one third for age greater than 21 for employees is probably not a very good estimate. But since an optimizer does not know what the word employee or age mean, it needs something to guide it, and that's the histograms in this case. So uh, it actually happened that 95% of the histogram uh, of the employees ha are older than 21, and that means that the selectivity computed here goes up from 0.01 to 0.03. Uh, and then here, here you see we have still have a one uh, left that is a guessman, and 10% is probably too frequent, even if John is a frequent name. Uh, you could add a histogram here too, but it's not necessarily that good since you, you probably have too many names to make a singleton histogram, so the equality will probably not be uh, that accurate uh, computed. So in this case, you probably should add an index or name. Because if you look at these uh, uh, conditions there, it's actually the name that is the most selective one. So actually, in this case, you probably want to start with the employee table and filter out on, 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 on name using an index. The other ones here is, more, is not that selective. And so an index might not be useful, and then you could use a histogram instead. Here's an example of how we use uh, histograms. This is, uh, uh, this is still an age column, and in this case, it's not employees, but the entire population. So you see, it's an equi height because you have 10 buckets, and it's around 10% in each of the buckets. And uh, most of them are like about seven or eight years in each bucket, except the last one, that for natural causes, is a bit wider in range. Um, but, and we have stored, for each bucket, we have the cumulative, cumulative uh, uh, frequency stored. And to show you why this is use, most useful, um, I can go through an example here, where we, we are looking for all that are 21 years and below. First we do is we identify the bucket for 21, it's this one. Then we, to compute the selectivity, we first check the, the cumulative frequency of the previous bucket, which is 20.3%, uh, uh, which is, and all these, we know that these are younger than 21. And since we have the cumulative frequency here, we don't have to check the frequency in this bucket. It's enough to check the previous one. We know that we have at least 20%, but then we need to figure out how large part of this bucket should go into this condition. So then we check the uh, uh, frequency for that bucket, but then we need to take into account that 21 is like less than or equal to 21 is like five or eight of eight values in that bucket. So you add that fraction to the selectivity, and you end up with point. 267 as the uh, filtering effect of this condition. And if you want the, the, the opposite, you just do 1 minus the, the, uh, the, other, the previous one, so you get that 73% is older than 21. Another example of a query, this is a query from the DB3 benchmark, where you have I don't want to, to uh, need, you don't need to understand the entire query. It's called the volume shipping query. And actually what it does, it, it calculates the revenue of uh, goods going from uh, suppliers in Russia to customers in France and vice versa. And we don't have an index on the name. And as I said earlier, if we are, would be guessing, if we would say that 10% would be Russia and 10% would be France, which probably is not uh, accurate because neither Russia, there are more than 10 countries in the world. Uh, without histogram, we get this plan. We start with a full table scan or one normal joint plan, start with a full table scan or a range scan, and then you do lookups into each table, either a secondary index or a primary index, all the way to have chained together all the tables. In this case, that means that you get like 855,000 
primary key lockups into the other nation table. But when you add histogram to this, you uh, see that there's a very few combinations here. So actually, it's better to just combine these uh, France and Russia early on, and then you just you you avoid thousands of primary key lockups in the final table that you will otherwise have. And if you look at the performance here, we see that not this, as big a as imp improvement as a, in the first example, but you see that you go down from 1.7 to 1.35 seconds or something like that. So to conclude with some advice here, when should you create histograms? Uh, it's useful, as I said, for, column, uh, for uh, columns that are not indexed or for columns that not, are not the first column of any index. Because if you have like a two-column index, th there's no way for the optimizer to do this uh, index dives in order to find the values for that column. Uh, and it's used in, in addition to join queries, which is the most important. It's also useful for queries where you have in subqueries, because there we try to estimate the size of the uh, subqueries and so on. And also in for single table queries, if you have order by limit, because then you have the choice of uh, ordering the entire result and then do limit, or use some index that are already ordered. But in order to understand whether that is uh, performant or not, you need to know how long, pa uh, how far into the index do you need to scan in order to find enough rows for your limit. And then the filtering estimate is important. The best fit by far is if you have low cardinality columns like gender or order status or day or week or so, because then the, uh, okay, I have to end, uh, he says. Uh, but uh, I only have this one left. Uh, if you have an index, no use. If it's not used in a very close, forget about histograms. Uh, how many buckets? If you can get a single ton, use as many as you need. If not, I would guess 100 should be enough because then you have like a granularity of 1% which should be useful. More information? There's a nice blog by my colleague about this that you can uh, look up. The slides are already on the uh, FOSTEM page, so you can get all that information from there. Yeah. Yeah. Show me. Yes, it's stored in this in data dictionary, and uh, it's it's uh, it's what the new 80 data dictionary made is very to make imp very easy to make a, a view information schema view over this, and they got a lot for free uh, by using that. Yeah. So how uh, is using histograms, how would that dif differ from partitioning? Oh, it's, so you want the equi equal size partitions in some way? We haven't thought about that, but uh, one thing uh, I, 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 I forgot to say is that uh, uh, if you have histograms, they are good estimates of your data. So you can actually, instead of doing costly queries against your data, you could actually just uh, query the histograms in order to, to get the, uh, some. Uh, and you can use that you can use the information schema table for. Yeah. Yes? Uh, no, we don't currently have that. Uh, uh, in order to detect whether to update the histogram, I guess you need to 
to keep uh, have some awareness about how frequently your uh, distribution change because in, like in this order status example I had for example th they are usually pretty fixed even if you add more orders it will probably be like 47% of each of the two big ones and three is in the last one so in that case you would not need to uh, to update your histograms even if you add a lot of more data in other cases uh, um, that might not be the case. So if you have more questions for Ostein, go to the bar with him, uh, pay him a beer, he'll be very happy and uh, it will answer your questions. <laughs>